We are as anxious and frustrated as the devil is dark. The devil is full of lies. And God is trying to speak to your dream part, your imagination, your spirit woman, and show you in this spirit woman pictures and dreams. Some of you are asking, how come the prophetic got so cloudy? How come the vision got so dark? And how come I can't hear anything? Lean on neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes we get in the wrong frequency, you know. You know, there's something called a radio, and it's not used that often. They've got now satellite radio, and either way, it works the same way. There are invisible words, invisible sounds traveling through the air. They are projected into the air by a, 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 a either a uh, DJ or a radio station, and they shoot it out of that tower. And the more high-powered the tower, they send these words and these sounds invisibly into the air. And if you in your car or you have a boombox or have some type of receiver, you can receive those signals and have an amplifier and power and have, have a speakers tied up and now you can hear those invisible sounds miles and even tens of miles even hundreds of miles away depending on how powerful it is but you've got to be tied to the right channel the right frequency the right number somebody say help us Lord you, look at your neighbor you better put on the right channel say amen they call them a station it's a station the right number and see see if, if you're saved say I'm saved I only listen to certain stations say help us Holy Ghost you know there's a, around here there's a couple of Holy Ghost stations say amen shout a couple of Holy Ghost stations out to me 90.1 say 90.1 you're saved you're listening to 90.1 praise the Lord they used to call it K Lord old people remember that the young people what is K Lord it's now called Air One you're a little older and you, you got some gray. You want to hear 89.7. Praise the Lord. 107.9. Right? Praise the Lord. Classical stuff. You're going to get teaching there. You're going to find these, these godly stations. But there's some other stations. Some other stations. You better bind those in Jesus' name. 99.1. I don't know if it's still there. It's been a long time. Power 106. They need to get delivered. Kiss 1027, you hear that station, and there's some things gonna come through that are not gonna edify you, that they're gonna make sound real good, boom, 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 but it's gonna kill your spirit, man, and it's gonna kill your spirit. I can I can handle you. Can, it's not about what you can handle, because what goes into your ear and into your heart comes out of your mouth, and you don't need to talk about bumping the club and popping bottles and dropping it like it's hot. You need to keep your mind stayed on Jesus and keep a word in your mouth. You don't got time to get ready, you gotta stay ready with a word in your belly and keep your mind on G. All right. The problem is we're on the wrong stage. You know, now they've got numbers. Back then they didn't have numbers. Old folks, we had uh, little knobs. Some of you kids, what is a knob? It's a knob. And you had to kind of twist it a little bit to the right and twist it a little bit to the left. And if you, you were hearing your music and then you went a little left and then the classical bump, what happened? You twisted it too far and got to a wrong station. I want to tell you it's time to hear the word of the Lord and to see all what God is saying and to put our mind on peace and our mind on rest and our mind on love. Uh, the, the fruits of the Spirit are the key to hearing and seeing. So shall the word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me, but it will accomplish what I please and it will prosper in the thing that I sent it. So God on his throne is transmitting words to you and I. So he says, church, he that has an a receiver, let him, these are not your spiritual ears. Can you hear what the Lord is saying? Do you have an ear? So the word will go forth from his mouth, but the word will not void. So the word must be returned. Luke James said, neighbor, return to sender. So I hear the word. I hear the word from God. Then I do what? Send it back. And when I send the word back, it doesn't return void, but it begins to accomplish what he pleases and it prospers in the thing that he sent. Repeat after me. Say, I got to hear the word 
then I've got to say the word. I've got to say the thing. The key to ascension is learning to say what God is saying when he's saying it. To open your mouth and I know you're mad and you're tired and you're upset, but bless him anyway. Make a decision like David. I will bless the Lord all my soul and everything that's within me. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth because what comes out of your mouth will manifest in your life. Ephesians 4 verse 8 says that he said, wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. This is found, this is a quotation, Psalm 68 verse 18. The psalmist wrote this and Paul, the New Testament writer, is quoting, thou hast ascended on high, say high. He's elevated, he's climbed, he's propelled. Thou has led captivity captive, and you receive gifts from men. Repeat after me, say, Lord, give me power to ascend. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6 says, You are already seated in heavenly places. And when Jesus rose on the third day, he rose with power, said, Power. Then he came into the earth. He showed himself in the earth. John chapter 20 tells us that he appeared at the grave of, uh, of the tomb while he was on his way up. He told Mary, his worshiper, don't touch me. This is unusual. All through the New Testament, you could touch, you could feel. After he comes back later, he says, feel me, Thomas, touch me. And believe, put your finger in my side, put, put, your, put your finger in, my, in these holes in my hands and only be faithful, not doubting. Somebody say, I'm not going to doubt. I'm going to believe. But John chapter number 20, verse 17, Jesus appeared and said to Mary, do not touch me. For I have not yet ascended to my father. So he rose from the grave but had not yet ascended from the earth before the father and put his blood on the mercy seat. So he could not be touched yet. Repeat after me. Say, God says the devil can't touch this. Just tell him. Push your neighbor and say, the devil can't touch this. I, I declare there's a purity and there's a power and there's a potency about to come on your life. Uh, and what the enemy was trying to touch with infirmity and touch with weariness, it's coming off of you. This thing has to come under the blood because God is about to raise you up and bring you to a place in the spirit realm where you're going to go in and help many people that have been broken. You see, you're not going into that place for you. You're going into that place for many around you that are broken, that are wounded, uh, that are hurting. Uh, See, when you get in, you're not just going to get in to get in. After you get in, you will lead captivity captive. That means what was holding you, you're about to help other people. What was stopping you, you're about to free other people. What was hurting you is now under your power, and you're coming back to bankrupt hell. See, Jesus is a high priest. After the order of Melchizedek. See, Jesus... Hebrew says is our high priest. What does the high priest do? He does what? He intercedes. What does he do once a year on the day of atonement? He goes into the covered from head to toe with what? Blood. Center in his hand. Worship. Worship. He goes in with blood. Blood and worship. And he goes behind the veil to the glory. And there he applies on the mercy seat what? Blood. For who? For, number one, for him. Then for the? That's what that is about. Getting in there is about the course of nations. You're listening. You're listening. Getting into this place with God going before the throne to put blood on the seat 
to do worship, to offer the incense at the golden altar. There are two altars, the bronze altar, the gold altar. The bronze altar is for sacrifice and for change and for transformation, for justification. But the golden altar is for worship and worship alone. You only put sweet smelling savor on that altar. And that altar is the entry point into the holies of holies. It's right at the bridge between the holy place and the most holy. And once a year, the, the high priest is going to go in, covered from head to toe with blood, with the censer, waving worship before the Lord and putting blood on that mercy see blood on that place so that the sins of the people will be covered for a year say amen yeah. now God invites you and I into the holies of holies unheard of how is it possible that Hebrew says we have access with boldness into the holies of all because you now can go in for them I, I know I know it's hard to believe that you are being invited into the holy place. That you are being invited to, to do business in that secret place. See, Jesus is about to go up to you. Don't, don't touch me. Verse no, Go back to 20, verse 17. He said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father. I've not yet ascended to my father. You can't touch me. But go and tell my brethren. The first place Jesus ever calls his disciples brethren is here. They are students. They are friends. They are, they are disciples, but the first place he ever calls them peers is here because he's about to make atonement and he's about to invite them into the brethrenhood, the, the brotherhood. Say amen. Go and tell my brethren, say unto them, I ascend to my... Now he goes there to put his blood on the mercy seat. Say amen. He goes there to make a way into the holies of... I go to prepare a place for... Now, I go to my father, but now I go to, now I go to my God, but now I go to, he's making a way for us to follow him in. Push your neighbor, say neighbor, he's our God. Push your neighbor, say neighbor, he's our father. He's making a way for us to go in. He's going to ascend, and that's what he did then. But I want to tell you, God is calling you higher now to make a way for your brother and your sister and your mama and your cousin and the people fighting you. God says, you come on in, and I've made a way for you to get in. We have access into the holies of all through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 19. Why would I want to go there? <laughs> I talk to people all the time. They're very nervous. They're very nervous. So they're very nervous. very nervous. I mean, they're talking, the hands are a little shaky. <laughs> Pastor, you know what they're doing in the news? This is going to happen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Antichrist. One world government. Earthquakes, God, God, God told us last year, the year before, earthquakes in diverse places are earthquakes where there are not normally earthquakes. Say amen. Y'all remember that? Just saw that in New York. You know, California, it ain't no, ain't no end, end time miracle if it happens in California, praise the Lord. We ride 5.0s, amen. We learn to ride them, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, like we surfing. You gotta be 7.0 to get us nervous, praise God. They're over there scared and praying to go to heaven, but praise God, we'll pray for our New Yorker friends, okay? <laughs> but signs of the end of ages, not the end of the world. An age is a dispensation, a time, an appointed time. And what happens is an, an age is ending and a new one is beginning. You listening to me? Now things are going to happen. Antichrist is going to rise. They're going to try and attack us. They're going to open up borders. They're going to, they're going to release sickness on us. They're going to do fa pandemics. They're going to release famines. We know the people in high places are not fearing God. They don't care about us. They don't love us. These are high spiritual witness in high places, principalities and powers, and spiritual darkness that we are wrestling with. Push your neighbor and say, I'm wrestling with principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. These are governmental terms. These are not just heavenly terms. There are forces and exousias that want to mandate things that are wicked. But when I get into that holy place, when I go into the realm of the spirit and I meet with God, every devil has to bow. Every demon has to bow. If I can get in to this place with God, God will spare the nation. Are you hearing me? There are things coming now. 
on the calendar now. Terrorist attacks planned now. Famines planned now. Riots planned now. Happens to be an election year. What happened in 2024? The devil wants to happen now. But look, Shabbos and neighbor, I'm not just sitting around. I'm going into the presence of my God. I'm going into the presence of my Father. And when I get into the holies of holies and I put blood on that altar and I lay my sacrifice, then I can see salvation on the whole niche. Having therefore boldness, brothers, who? Brethren, to enter to where? The holies of all. By the blood of, you can go boldly to the throne of, to obtain help. Not against water supplies. That's not my hope. He won't let me. I mean, if, if, if our hope was, I told you before, being doomsday preppers, we'd be the best doomsday preppers ever. God said, put all the water under, under, your, under your basement and put 10 years of food. God said, build an underground bunker. We'd build it. Say, we would build it. But they, 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 so Armageddon's coming, and we're just going to build these bunkers, so we're going to be all right. And how stupid does that sound? I'm going to survive down here like God don't know I'm down there. Like the devil don't know I'm down there. You listening to me? And they feel it. They can feel You can feel it. You feel something's going to happen. You, can feel, you don't know what it is. You just feel it. When the TV's off, the Netflix is off, the telephone is off, you just in there like, oh, going, trying to go to bed. Something's telling you something's coming. Something's on the way. Get ready. Get, well, well, I don't know what to do. you got to be a watchman on the wall. You've got to get in your prayer closet. You've got to get in the spirit and begin to cry out for the blood of Jesus. And you've got to come boldly into the holies of holies. And you don't get in there just to see around what's happening. You go and do business for nations. You go and do business for California. You do business for the United States of America. You go and do business on behalf of regions and territories. Because when God meets with men in this place, it's about the course of generations. Or is that in the Bible? Abraham said, Lord, if I can find 50 righteous, the wages of sin has gone of Sodom right before my throne as a stench, and I'm coming down to see what I will, will say. I'm coming down myself. And he said, but I can't come until I talk to my ecclesia. Let me come and talk to my man. Are you God's man? Are you God's woman? Have you made a place of friendship? And intimacy with God. Doesn't matter if people know your name. Doesn't matter if your name's not in lights. Does God know your name? Well, He knows my name, but I don't really know Him. <laughs> Sir, you got, I got, I've got to get alone with God. You've got to get alone with God. When you enter the holies of holies now, you begin to contend. And God says, I'm about to bring this judgment on the earth, but I cannot hide it from Abraham because Abraham will be a great nation. I'm in Genesis chapter number 8, Genesis chapter 17. Now, God is getting ready to visit. Say visit. visit. Somebody say visit. visit. And when he comes, he brings justice. What is sown, there's a harvest. Somebody say judgment, judgment. means justice. justice. What I've sown, I've sown, I get to reap. Get to reap. Somebody give God a hand clap for that. Give God a hand clap. <laughs> justice. God wants to bring justice. The Bible says, God said, can I hide from my friend Abraham what I'm about to do? God could not hide. Genesis 18, 17, can I hide from Abraham the thing that I'm about to do? Scripture says, and the Lord said, Genesis 18, 17, and the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I'm about to do, seeing Abraham will surely become a mighty nation, and all nations of the earth will be blessed by him, for I know him. Wait, 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 wait. All right, read it again. Verse 17, the, the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I'm about to do? So God's about to come down to where? Where? Earth, and who's he going to visit? All right, but before, so he, he needs to talk with Abraham, but what city is he about to visit? Sodom and 
What has gone before the Lord? Sin. Their sin. And make no mistake, even in the New Testament, this still happens. It doesn't change just because we're under grace now. The wages of sin is still in the New Testament book of Revelation when the bowls of wrath get so full, it's poured out and judgment hits the earth. When the bowls of the prayers of the saints get full, the, 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 the bowls are poured out and revival hits the earth. Somebody say, are we praying? Are we calling out to the Lord? The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham? I'm going to visit him. Verse number eight, seeing Abraham will become a great and mighty nation. And all nations will be blessed by him. For I know him. I know who? That he will com command his household after him to keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that he may bring upon Abraham which speak. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is grievous, I will go down now and see whether, uh, whether what have been done altogether according to the cry of which some have came to me. So now the cry of sin and wickedness still goes up. Make no mistake, that hadn't changed. Well, in the New Testament, it doesn't change the law. The wages, Romans, of sin, it still comes. But God looks, say looks, to and fro on the earth for an intercessor. He's looking for a man to stand in the gap, a woman to lift her hands and say, God, have mercy on Riverside. Have mercy on Moreno Valley. Put down the television remote. Put down the Facebook. Put down the Netflix and pick up the word and get on your face and cry for your city. God, have mercy on Paris. Have mercy on Corona. God, spare this land. Abraham drew near. So will you destroy the righteous? Verse 23. Abraham drew near. Abraham did what? <laughs> Luke James said, neighbor, draw near. Now there's some smart folks in the room. Say amen. You were kids before. And you, you, you wanted something you knew your parents were probably going to say no. So you had to butter them up. <laughs> say Amen. Some of you husbands and wives still use that trick. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Best you when you're close. When your eye is on him and you're worshiping. You're seeking him. You're the, you're the, we're the worst of us when we're far from God. Abraham drew close and said, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Will you do this? Will you preadventure if there's 50 righteous in the city? Will you not destroy or spare the place for 50 righteous that are in Verse 25, that be far from thee to do this manner and slay the righteous with the wicked and the righteous with the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of the earth do what is right. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within this city, I will spare the whole city. Think about that. The privilege to stand in the gap for a city that should be destroyed. You know, stuff going on in the earth, it, we should be destroyed. But God looks for a man or woman to stand. And we got to actually go into the holies. And worship and encounter God. And like Esther went to the court of the king uninvited. She came in. And what did she go there for? Talk to me. Did she just say, I just feel like visiting the king? She didn't want to go. She said, I ain't going over there. I'm in the palace. Say amen. And then she said, oh, you know, I was just playing, Mordecai. I was just playing, praise God. You know I was going to go anyway, praise. Y'all fast three days. I'm going to fast three days with my handmaiden. And I'm going into where? To who? Come on. To intercede on behalf of a nation that was surely going to be destroyed. There were reports going to be bombing. There were reports that, that ISIS and these, they're telling us, be careful tomorrow, be careful all week. And we have to be careful. We have to be careful. But how can you keep yourself? And we're praying for praying for border patrol and praying that they're where they need to be, where, where we need to be. Praying and fasting and crying out to God and saying, God, have mercy on our land. God says, I'll spare the city for 50. Say, well, Amen. I'll spare the city. Verse 26, if I find 50 righteous 
within the city. I will spare the sake for 50. Abraham answered again and said, Behold now, take it upon me to speak to the Lord. I'm but dust and ashes. Preadventure, we lack five of the 50 righteous. Will you not destroy the city if you lack five? He said, and he said, if I find 40 and five, I will not destroy it. Look at the neighbor. neighbor. Now he's pushing it now. Now he's pushing it. You know? All right. Well, what, 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 what if we miss some five, Lord? Uh, all right. So that's good. Praise the Lord. He keeps going. I mean, I mean, praise the Lord. I will not destroy it for 45. He said to him, yet again, preadventure shall be 40 found. Will you not spare it for 40? And he said to him, and he said, I will not do it for 40. What about 30? What about 20? He just make, let's make a deal, Jesus. Come on. How about 10? And he stops at 10. What if he would have went to five? Who knows? You understand this is why we must ascend. Not because you need a better car. God wants to give you a better car. Not because God wants to give you a big house. And God wants to bless you with a house. So that God can use you and me. Number one, somebody say ascend on high to lead captivity captive to to bind what tried to bind us to cap to bring captive what tried to capture us we must lead captivity captive first samuel 17 51 we're just about done the bible says there was a man named david and david had to go to battle and david is fighting a battle say a battle and there was a man in the valley of elah this man was a giant he's so big so he's more than 10 feet tall. He was a warrior since he was youth. Covered from head to toe. Only one place was penetrable or, or could be penetrated his, his mind. Everything else was covered, impenetrable. A warrior, indestructible. And the sight of this man made, made all of Israel's mighty men shrink and hide behind the rocks. The Bible says for 40 days and 40 nights he began in the morning and the evening taunt them. Say, where is your God? You got dressed up for battle? Send somebody to fight me. Come on. He just started punking them. Started running his mouth and just saying, where is the God of Israel? My God is bigger. And all these men, mighty men, they just stood there. Little David, 14-year-old, 15-year-old, they say. Little boy came. He wasn't even invited to the battle. He came to deliver cheese and crackers. He, he's the delivery boy. He's not there to fight. He just hears this devil running his mouth. And he hears this, he said, well, who, who, who is this that is there speak against the armies of the living God? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? They, be quiet. His brother said, get out of here. Be quiet. We know you. He said, no, 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 no. We, we can't have this. And David said, I, I dealt with a lion. I dealt with a bear. And I'm going to deal with this uncircumcised Philistine. And what does the man get that gets? He said, well, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to be, uh, uh, be free from taxes, meaning that you'll, your family will never pay taxes again, meaning everything against you, all your legal debt, all your, your attack of the, of the devil will be canceled. Say, canceled. Repeat after me. Say, me and my whole house are going to be free him. Number two, you're going to marry the, the, the daughter of, of the king. You're going to marry Micah. And you'll be a prince in the kingdom. He said, that sounds good to me. He goes and tells the king, I defeated the lion and the bear. I'm going to take care of this guy. And the Bible says that, uh, that Saul tries to put his armor on him. Says, I can't use that armor. It's untested. He goes to battle. And there he stands in the valley of Elah with a sling and a rock, a rag and a rock, fighting this 10-foot killing machine. The Bible says that, 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 that a man had to carry a shield. So big this shield was that a man had to carry a weaver's beam, which is so many feet long, and an impenetrable spear covered from head to toe. And he mocked him and ridiculed him and said who am I that you sent a dog to me but here is the, the key to the victory he said if we if I beat you you will be our slaves and if you beat me we will be your slaves remember God said this to me it goes in the end it comes down to man to man woman to woman he told Gideon you defeated these army of Midianites as one man in the, in the end, if nobody goes with you, nobody will agree with you, nobody will stand with you, nobody will pray with you, look at and say, neighbor, this is man to man. This is woman to woman. I'm going to take this devil's head off. Uh, and after I take this devil's head off, my nation will be free. My family will be free. My parents will be free. My mom and dad will be I'm not just fighting for me. I'm fighting for a generation. It's man to man. It's woman to man. You're going to fight this devil. And if you win, you're going to see the spoils of this victory. And the Bible says he took this rock uh, and he flung this rock into the head of Goliath. And it sunk in, meaning he put a word in his 
his mouth and spoke a word to disarm this principality. He fell, but when he ran upon the devil, Luke Chambers, I'm about to run. First Samuel 17, 51. It says, after he struck him in the head, after the word, the smooth stone, your word, your grace, your living stone must smooth in the river. It penetrated and it sunk in. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine. Repeat after me, say, I'm going to stand over what was standing over me. It was a picture of a giant that had fallen. Now, David is standing over what stood over him. This is a picture of leading captivity captive. He took the sword of the Philistine and drew it out of the sheath thereof and saw, slew him and cut off the head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they flew, they fleed, they fled. So David throws the stone. The stone knocks down this giant who represents a principality and a power. There's only one thing to do with the principality is take off his head. But David had no sword, so David takes the sword of Goliath and cuts Goliath's head off with his own sword. I need you to push your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm about to defeat the devil with his own weapons. Tell him, tell him. I'm about to turn this on the devil that what was trying to kill me is going to kill him. What was meant to design to take me out, I'm going to take him out with. What was designed to hold me back is going to help me out. What was designed to bring me backward is going to boost me forward. I don't know who this is for, but you're dealing with something that feels life-threatening in your life. God said, don't you be afraid. The God who is with you never sleeps or slumbered. You're not coming with flesh and blood, but you are coming in the name of the Lord of hosts. They come with soul and spears but God is on your side and after you make him fall and you stand over him don't leave him alive don't let him come back take the head off of this giant and cause the victory of God to release the spoil we don't know what David did with this all we know it says he carried the head back to the city all we know but we do know some hundreds of years in the future that a man named Jesus walks up a mountain and this mountain was called Golgotha, the place of the skull. I believe that David took this head as an offering and laid it in the very place Jesus was crucified. Therefore, he's called the son of David. And he prepared in the past what God would do in the future. And this is the power of your grace, the power of you leading captivity captive. Just about done. Revelation 3.21 says, when you overcome, the place you overcome will become a throne. Say a throne. A throne. To him that overcomes, say overcome. I don't like it. I don't like the testing. I don't like the proving. I don't like the trials. I don't like when the enemy's prodding me and pushing me and trying to tempt me to do this and trying to push me to step out of the will of God. I don't like when things arise in my home, in my family, and in my, in my finances to try and push me outside of the will of God. But there must be tempering before there's approval. God will not approve what has not been tempered. So the proving and the testing is about the approval in secret so that God can raise you up and you don't lose your mind when you get there. God does not approve what has not been tested. You don't take an untested weapon into battle. It's never, you've never shot that gun before. You don't take it into battle. You've got to go and get familiar with your sword. You've got to know, and you are an instrument. And if you will overcome, not undercome, not around come. If you will overcome, if you will deal with you, deal with me, deal with my emotion. Because the truth of it is, it's not the people around me. It's nothing, there's nothing people can do to make me stop what I'm believing God. Ain't nothing my family can do, ain't nothing the past can do, ain't nothing the haters can do, ain't nothing the devil can do. It's inside of me. I've got God in me. And if I hold to the promise of God, nothing will stop the promise of God on my life. But the challenge is when things arise in me, what happens in my heart, in my mouth, and in my attitude? Do I realize I'm being examined to be a, to, for ascension? God is examining for ascension. God is looking and inspecting 
Not because he's trying to disqualify you. He wants to raise you so he does, and he wants to raise you and complete you and heal you and minister to you and settle you and bring you to this place of consistency so that as he lifts you up, he doesn't lose you. You know, when it, there's a, a problem in the kingdom that, that when God raises people, he loses people. They're anointed, they're on fire, they're, they're pure, they're walking holy, then they get blessed. All of a sudden, so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, usually the first thing to change is their spouse. The first thing usually. I don't need this no more. I don't put up with this. What do you mean don't put up with this? The first thing to usually go is I got to change spouses because this one is too hard to deal with. That's the, the lie of the devil. That the God raises that man of God through singing or through preaching or through finance. And then they say, I need my new, I need my, my second wife. You know, I mean, this was my starter wife. The devil is a liar. God be, said, I begin to rebuke those that were priests that put away the wife of their youth. Malachi, God was angry. God was angry with the priests because they were putting away the wife of their youth. They, they had not understood the power of being a covenant man. The power, put, lift your hand, say, in the name of Jesus, uh, I declare God is going to heal marriages uh, and going to heal houses uh, and families. I'm not going to ship. Even as I have overcome and have sat down in my father's throne, I don't know what you are to overcome. I don't know the details of your own walk. We all have something we're trying to deal with. We all have something we're trying to battle with. We don't, I don't know what it is, but I know for you and for me, it's different, but I know they have some similarities. It's trying to kill us. Whatever it is, it's what you told yourself you would never do. Whatever it is, you promised yourself you would never, you vowed to yourself you would never go through this. And there you find yourself having to do the thing you told yourself you would never do for the sake of God. How it works. He loves you and he's chosen you, but he's building you. You are his workmanship. Say overcome. I've got to conclude now, but Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9 says, Ascension follows dissension. Ascended follows descended. Up comes after down. Got a half an amen to the right. I said up. Follows. I don't want to be there. To rule, sometimes, most of the times, you become a captive there. The captivity, the bondage, the trial. Uh, don't, 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 don't let nobody know your business. Say amen. What are you fighting that's not letting go? Well, you keep anointing with oil and it, the devil gets meaner. He's slinging all that oil and nothing happened yet. Speaking in tongues loud and ain't leaving. Shatatan, it ain't, ain't moving. But that, it's a strong. The more you pray, the more you cry out, the more it just seems to just not want to move. What's fighting you? What's holding you. It could be finance. It could be children. It could be a marriage that just seems to go from bad to worse. He said, there's nothing I can do about it. I just got to move on and do live, live for me now. He just got to live for you now. He's got to do it on my own. Children, family, brothers, sisters, finance, health. What is it that's holding? See that the ascension, the rising, it must, it has to come. Yeah. Say amen. amen. The rising has to come. Say amen. amen. But the prerequisite to rising is descension. How do you handle descending? You know, the, the, the people that are poor sports. Say amen. amen. Now, none of us like losing, I, you know, you know. I heard this and I agree. I, I hate losing more than I like winning, praise God. I just hate to lose, you know. I'm not used to it. I'm used to winning, praise God. Every now and again, I'll lose a monopoly, but not often, praise the Lord. <laughs> maybe one time in 20 years, my wife will say, maybe once, maybe, because they all ganged up on me and they, they I ain't going to bring it up in Jesus' name. They convinced me. It's godly to, I said, no, no, I got to lock this up. I lock it up in Jesus. I monopolize, praise the Lord. You cometh in Jesus. I prophesied. I said, no, that's how I am. Praise God. Forgive me, Lord. Amen. All right. 
but you're not, you're not meant to lose. You're not meant to lose. But how do you handle the cross? Though you're not losing, you're in the middle of what looks like loss. And now they say he could heal others, but he can't heal himself. And you know, you know, you know, if you really God come off the cross. And those moments of, of allowing, it says that he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of dying. To us, death is final, but God said death ain't final. In order for me to defeat death, I've got to submit to death so that I can rule death. And I'm going to defeat the one that had power over death. But I, this is a part of the process. The part of the process is it feels like loss. It feels like, like you're losing. But you, you see, the challenge is realizing what you're seeing is not the end of the thing. Amen. See, you can go through what you're going through and still get up and still praise and still worship because you know it's not over. Let's your neighbor say, it ain't over. Push your neighbor say, it ain't over. God said, there's a bounce back coming. There's a restoration coming. And I've got to learn how to wait for the nations to call me. I couldn't wait for God to use me. Then now you're here. You're like, Lord, I, I wish I was just back where I was. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Had more time. I just wish I just, the grass is always greener. And while I couldn't wait internally and I wanted it so badly. And now the Lord said, why do you want it? And then I began to want it because I wanted his will, not because I wanted to show the people that I wasn't crazy. There's a lot of people say, you crazy, apostle. Or pastor, brother, family member, you just crazy. Yes, but I heard God. You heard God. And God brings you to the low parts of the earth. The low places prepare you for the high places. The things of small beginning prepare you for, 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 for multiplication. And we want to rush out of these moments. I just remember God saying, enjoy the journey. John 3 verse 30 says, I've got to decrease you so that I can increase. No amens there, that's fine. He must increase. But I got to decrease. I got to decrease. You know what that decrease? It's a nice word of saying das. To make inferior, loss of dignity, inferior in dignity, decrease in authority, decrease in popularity, less. The root word is elasone, less in age, less in rank, in excellence to be worse in excellence, to be younger, to be smaller, of quantity, of age, of rank. You just now shrink this is not our nature to decrease it's not our nature because we're progressive creatures we're growing we're advancing but God says what I'm getting ready to increase in your life you have to shrink you got to humble yourself before me you got to surrender yourself praise team come up in five minutes the praise team ready decrease 1 Peter 5 verse 6 says that if I'm going to raise you, if I'm going to raise you, you've got to let me humble you. Say amen. amen. And we go through humbling. Psalms 23 says that he makes us lie down. Read that verse very quickly. Psalms verse 23 says that he makes us lie down in green pastures. How many have ever had God make you lie down? Amen. Psalms 23 verse 2 says, He makes me lie down. You don't have to wave your hand, but God ever had to humble us? Because we were proud. We were stubborn. We didn't want to let him do it his way. So he made you lie down. But he actually lied you in a green pasture. He actually put you in a, a good place. But that didn't feel like a pasture. It feels like a, a desert. It feels like a wilderness. But actually the, the pasture, the green pasture and the still water is the place in the spirit that will change the place in the natural. So there's a spiritual place that God is trying to get you to to change your external place. There's an external place that doesn't look like your promise. God's not concerned about that. What he's looking at 
Sometimes we get in this wilderness of heart, this wilderness of soul, this wilderness of attitude, this wilderness, this descended place, and we stay broken inside and eternally. And God says, I've got I've to sit you down. I've got to make you lie down. And then, say then, I learn the art of humbling myself. After God makes you sit, I'm, we can say this because baby's still a little small. A 21-year-old, say, help him, Jesus. You got a two-year-old, say, help him, Lord. They all spread out, praise God. The two-year-old Zoe does not want to use the potty. Say, help us, Lord. She'll just sit there. Go, mm-mm. She's, mm-mm. So we'll even give her cartoons. Say, just sit there, baby, and go in there. Come on now. Time should catch up with you. No, an hour, she's just there 30 minutes. So we have to make her sit down. We have to make her sit. We have to take her from her duties and we're trying to train her. We're trying to wean her off of this and we just got off the bottle a little bit ago. Now she got the pacifier. So the pacifier. She goes, mommy, I need pacifier. <laughs> and she calls it the white. Say the white. That's her favorite, the white. There's a blue and there's a red, but she wants the white. Give me the white. I want the white one. That's my favorite. Praise the Lord. We got to get off that next, right? And we've got to teach her and wean her. And we've got to sit her down and we've got to remove this from her. It's not that we enjoy her to cry or she's not uncomfortable. It's a part of her growth. And as a baby, we've got to mold her and sculpt her and see what's coming and and make her do these things. And she doesn't want to not potty in the diaper. But she got to grow up. So every morning we got to sit there, okay, come, come on and sit down. I think she's done it once or twice, and then we clap and we all celebrate, pray. <laughs> but after a while, God makes you, and makes you. Then he leaves you to yourself. Then, say then. Amen. Then, then. I'm done now. Make your way, praise him. 1 Peter 5, 6. Then, now, we learn, now. First Peter tells us, then we learn. Say, then we learn. First Peter 5 or 6, then we learn. Then we learn. First Peter 5, 6, then we learn to humble. We do what? We learn to descend. Then we finally realize, wait a minute now. If I descend, then I'm going to... Some people won't, won't learn it. They're just fighting it. You just hold now. And you're not maybe descending, you're not ascending, you're just right there. Humble yourself. Bring yourself low. Humble your... This is what men and women in the kingdom do, not children. Children don't humble themselves. Children are always right. They took my toy. This is morning. Nor was fighting Zoe. My toy... She got what's mine, and I got what's hers, and they're crying, and they're fighting. We're trying to go to church, fighting about a Barbie <laughs> on the way to church. So all the kids are trying to bring peace, and they don't know how to bring peace. But we're trying to teach them. <laughs> don't, don't get stirred up. They're throwing a tantrum. Dad, we, we're never allowed to throw a tantrum. I know. We're working through it. Amen. <laughs> they lose their peace. I'm like, look, calm down in Jesus' name. Let's... <laughs> Children do not humble themselves. They always have to be made to humble themselves. They always have to be made to sit, made to wait, made to learn. Say please, say thank you. And you just, and when is God going to take the pacifier out of our mouth? When can God say, okay, now it's time you were, I dealt with you as children, but now I want to deal with you as men and women of God. I gave you milk, but I want to give you meat. I want to give you mature, and I want to give you grace and power. I need to raise you, but I need to know that you've learned how to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Say, the hand of God. It means the authority, the power. And there is authority in heaven. Say, amen. There's an authority in heaven, and that's easy. It should be easy. I know it's not easy because, you know, when, when you're going through stuff, sometimes it's hard to humble yourself. You know, you're mad at them and you want to stay mad at them. So you go, oh, I ain't going to pray today because I want to stay mad. Because you know once you get in the presence, he's going to make you forgive. 
He said, I don't want to forgive now because he may, she may act up again. Mm, I ain't pointing tonight because I'm, don't touch me. You don't touch me. Amen. But first, it's God. Humble yourself before God. Then there's something called authority in the earth. There's God-ordained authority. And not every authority is not from God. I know there are crazy ones. I know there are ones that want this. And there's a lot of stuff happening. It's crazy. But there are God-ordained authority in the earth. I got five of you. It's me and the Lord. And I'm just free. Praise the Lord. You free. Just keep your freedom. You ain't going nowhere, but you're free. Just tumbleweed free. Ten years just walking in your freedom. You should be there. Those free birds, those ones that ain't no, there ain't no pastors anymore. The, the church age is over. They don't call you pastor nobody. Your name is Tom or Nathan. They don't call you pastor nobody. Just you're Nathaniel. Praise the Lord. Don't believe in authority, don't believe in submission, don't believe in church, because they were hurt with church, and I understand that. But there's an authority somewhere you must submit to. I said there's an authority, so if this isn't it, praise the Lord. But there's somebody somewhere on this earth that God says you need to submit to. And until you submit under that hand of authority, God will never raise you. Remember God told me that. He said, there's an authority I have for you that ain't the one you want. You were thinking this. You were thinking that. 25, God sat me down and said, go back home. Sit under the authority I have for you. Leave a mega ministry. Leave thousands of members. Leave opportunity to travel on planes and behind TBN and go sit under God-ordained authority. Not that that authority was wrong, but it wasn't for me at that time. It wasn't what I needed. So leave this. Leave that. And go back and sit. I'll never submit to anybody. Then you'll never be a part of the army. You'll, uh, listen to me. Not even because you're a part of Even if you have another place. Find where God assigns you. Amen. And there is a place for you. So I, don't, I can't find it. I'm searching. So, uh, so then now, begin to fast and pray. Say, Lord, show me where. And God will show it to you. Sometimes we're in transition. Sometimes we're looking for the place. But keep your heart open. Don't let the offense and the wound and the, and the mis manipulation and the wound of the past contaminate the future God has for you. Because God knows the hearts of the people. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. We know this. Say the hand of God. We heard it before. Say the hand of God. Say the hand of God. Apostles. Prophets. Evangelists. Teachers. Shepherds hand of God. It's an earthly office. Somewhere there's a place for you. Somewhere there's a place. Not me. Yes, you. Somewhere. It may not, didn't have to be here, but there's a place for you that the key to your next is finding that spot. When you do this, it won't always feel good. It won't always feel the way you want. But your dissension is the key to your ascension. When you humble yourself before the mighty hand, the Bible says, say, in due time, means a season. Once you start this process, you're building something called a due time or a due season. It's an appointed time that once you, according to Galatians, chapter number 4, verse 1, as we prepare to conclude with this, according to Galatians, and this is the process of God. I don't like it. I didn't make it up. It's not what I want. It's what I wish I could have gone around. But God says, I look back and now I say, thank you, God, for the process. Verse 2 says, but the heir, now Galatians 4 verse 2, is under tutors. Say tutors and governors. Tutors, governors. Tutors, governors. Number one, say the teacher. The first teacher is the Holy Spirit. Say the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. Say teach me Holy Ghost. Number two, governor. Say governor. Earthly authority ordained by God. A governing authority. And if we do not submit to the tutor, we will never submit to the governor. And the Lord said don't ever get mad when people don't submit. If they're not listening to you, it's because they're not listening to me. Just put them in my hands. And so you can listen and do it, but not with the right heart. I said, okay, Lord, help me. Then there's something called the appointed time. 
Close your eyes. This appointed time is what you're dreaming of. You dream of this. You see it. It's called an appointed time, a due season, a due time. And in this due time, your preparation, your process, your development, your submission, your skill, your anointing, your maturity, your character, merge with divine opportunity that comes from God. Now, before there will be divine opportunity, there will be premature promotion. You will always be offered premature promotion. If you just bend a little, if you just compromise a little, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you this with no cross. You could just take the shortcut, the easy way. No, 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 no. I declare you will not have premature promotion. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. You descended. And the descension is preparation for the ascension. Start to pray softly. Pray now. Pray. You can turn up the instrumental for just a minute. Get ready, praise team. We're done teaching. Now, God, I pray over these men. I pray over these women. This was not to destroy you. Listen. Hear me. Hear me. I see world changers. I see ministers. I see preachers. I see millionaires. I see prophets. I see evangelists. I see world shakers in the room. And you're saying, God, I didn't know that I'd have to go through what I went through. I didn't know it would take this long. I didn't know it would cost this much. I didn't know I'd be these many years waiting on the promise. And sometimes you can wait on the promise for so long. And if you can imagine the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness for 40 years and imagine that bitterness and that emptiness and that waiting and that despair despair getting inside of their heart and the Bible says because of this unbelief they fell in the wilderness but there were a couple others only two of thousands and hundreds of thousands even millions only two in that wilderness they were named Joshua and Caleb and the Bible says these men had a different spirit they could see differently and they could hear differently and they could believe differently and they could confess differently and they could curb themselves and they submitted to a process but God extended their years and the Bible says when they were in their 80s they could still outrun the youth God caused their eyes to not wax dim he caused their bodies to be rejuvenated because they were going to be leaders in this next dimension you didn't know that the waiting and the wandering and that the, and the process was only to bring you low so God could bring you high you didn't realize that everything you're going to and you're following this 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 direction and it feels like you're going in circles do they even know where they're going does it even really going to come to pass I've seen this mountain before I've seen this desert before I've seen this cactus before but hear me you are not the sons of Korah who will complain and who will murmur and who will be rebellious but you are the sons and daughters of Joshua and Caleb who have a different spirit who believe the report of the Lord for that report is life you will speak like pray now pray 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 you will speak life pray now you will go into the land of flowing milk and honey you will step into your due season when your preparation and your process and your development and your character and your integrity but also your skill and your anointing uh, your confluence will produce favor and power and that will meet your due season and when this due season comes no devil will be able to stop you no demon will be able to hold you no power will be able to hold you back God will raise you up front of your enemies pray now pray pray show us pray now pray God I intercede for these men pray now pray I declare you're not gonna die in the wilderness pray now I declare you will not lose heart you will not go weary in well-doing for in due season you will reap if you do not faint I declare you're gonna see your due season and you're not going to faint you're not gonna be overwhelmed you're not gonna be depressed and suppressed but you're gonna rise come on if you can't stand stand but lift your hands I'm gonna ask the, the pastors to get ready we're gonna to prepare to pray in a moment
far away from your present reality. It feels like that promise is there and, 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 and what you see is here and it feels like it's years away, decades away. It feels like it's lifetimes away. It feels like the promise is on Mars and you're on earth and you reach for it and you can't get there. But hear me by the Spirit. Let him finish in you. Let me give you a secret. Pastors, come forward. We're going to prepare to pray with you. Lift your hands. Now, I declare these men and women of God are not normal men. I'm not talking to normal believers. I'm talking to sons and daughters of God. I'm talking to world changers. I'm talking to kings and priests. I'm talking to leaders. I'm talking to entrepreneurs. Yeah, go ahead, worship team. They can lift that sound. I'm talking to entrepreneurs. I'm talking to business owners. I'm talking to shakers of nations. I'm talking to Esthers who will stand in the gap. You will stand in the gap and you will free your people from destruction. I'm talking to Joseph's who will go into the palace and will save your generation from the famine that will destroy the land. Talking to, jo to, to, to Moses who will go into the court of the Pharaoh and will free their nation from bondage and captivity. Lift your hands. We surrender God. We surrender to your will. We surrender to your process. As we lift up our hands, we say, Lord, we yield our will, our way, our intention, not our will, but your will. I declare I've been chosen. I've been picked before the foundation of the world. Now use my life for your glory, for your honor. I declare every defeat, every humiliation, every war will work out for my good. And I declare, you will lead me into ascension after dissension. And we will lead captivity captive. And we will be a blessing. If you receive that, say amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Go and begin to worship. If you're here and you'd like us to pray with you, I'm going to ask you to come. You're a believer. You say, I just want some agreement. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. You're here today. You say, I know I've got to go higher. Come, come, the altar's open. Come, come and worship. You just say, I want to come and worship. Come on, come, come. The altar's open. Come. Come on, come. When you come to the altar, you're bringing your generations with you. Some of you are standing in the gap for your family. Some of you, your family needs healing. Your marriage needs healing. Come, come. When pastors begin to lay hands on the people, begin to minister. Thank you. Come down. Bless the people. Pray now. Pray.
hands. Bless the people. Jesus, we declare life over your people. Help is on the way. Our hope is in you. your people. also community come on grab that neighbor's hand pray for them now the mighty hand of God is also community it's family it's relational so God I pray that these men and women as they hold that hand pray for that neighbor now we're, we're done in 30 seconds pray now pray for that brother pray for that husband pray for that wife they are going to make it you're going to make it sir ma'am you're going to make it Preacher, you're going to make it. Prophet, you're going to make it. Apostle in the making, you're going to make it. Pastor, business owner, mighty woman of God, man of God, pray now, pray. You're going to make it. You're not going to die. You're going to live. You're dying to yourself, but you're going to live to Christ. The old you is leaving. The new you is coming to life. Oh, you only went low because God, pray now, pray. 20 more seconds, pray. Strengthen them now. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. Don't turn around. Don't go backwards. Help is on the way. Strength is on the way. You're not alone. The devil says you're alone. The devil says you're by yourself. The devil is a liar. You've got to help on every side. You've got angels surrounding you. You've got brothers and sisters that are fighting with you. There are thousands of us that have not bowed our knee. I declare strength. Now I bless that hand. I bless that life. And I pray you release courage. You release boldness. And you release strength. 
for they're going to see your blessing. Now repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I decree your word is settled in heaven. Now I decree on earth, let your promise be seen in my life. I decree I descended so you will raise me up for your glory and for your honor. I humble myself before your hand that you would get glory, you would get honor through me and my family. I decree it now in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen, shout hallelujah. Give the Lord a good hand clap. High five about three people and tell them you're going to ascend. Give them a high five as they go back. You're going to rise up. You're going to elevate. He's not leaving you where you are. But help is coming. Help is on the way. Ascension. It is your destiny. It is your future. We believe that to be true. We love the Lord. If you love Jesus, I'm going to ask you to give him a great hand clap at your seat. Come on. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Come on. Push your neighbor and give him a high five. Tell him you're about to rise up. Come on. Look at somebody. Say prophesy. You're about to rise up. Look at somebody. In front of you. Behind you. Come on. Come on. Tell somebody. Turn around. Encourage them. It will be worth it. We are grateful for that. And we celebrate the Lord. Say amen. How many were blessed today? If you were blessed today, put your hands together one more time for that. Amen. Also, thank the Lord for the priest team. They're doing an amazing job. All right. Now, every first Sunday of the month is, they can just lower the volume just a little bit for us. Every first, the perfect sound there though. Uh, every first Sunday of the month is our first fruit. Somebody shout first fruits. And we're going to put up Proverbs chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And once a month, we come before the Lord and we ask God to increase us. Say increase. Now, I want you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I declare you are going to increase. Then what you have is going to increase. I said it before. It is wrong to ask God. Uh, to ask God, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, it is wrong to ask God to increase what we have before we increase in maturity. We must say, we must increase. Go to verse 9, Proverbs 3, verse 9 says that there is an honor and there is a regard. Here's what Proverbs 3, 9 says. We are to honor the Lord with our substance. Touch somebody and say, my substance isn't just my money. It's your time. It's your health. It's your everything you are. It's also your resource, but your time, your energy, your focus. You honor him with what you are and then with what you have. Say amen. Honor the Lord, which means to regard him, to put him first. And with the first fruits of increase. Now again, the first fruits is about increase. Say increase. How many know you need to multiply? I said, how many know that? Character, patience, love. I'm going to say that I, I need to increase in the fruits of the Spirit. By the Spirit, I can do that. Increase my love. Increase faith. Increase virtues. Increase character. But as you increase in character, you must increase in resource and in influence so you can impact the world. I'll, I'll tell you this again. I asked the Lord some years ago, God, I thought I was being real spiritual and real humble. I was praying, Lord, just give me just enough, Lord. I prayed that prayer. God, just give me just enough. And I felt a, 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 a slight rebuke. And say, he said, son, if I just give you enough for you, what about the children that are hungry? If I give you just enough for your family, what about the widow and the orphan? Look at your name and say, your cup can't be full. It must. What's overflow for? To be a blessing. I'm going to encourage you. God wants to bless you, to make you a blessing. And this act of first fruits, there's four giving in the Bible. Tithing is the Lord's. It's the, it's the Hebrew word, tenth. It was before the Old Testament. 
it was before the law was ever given the tithe was offered from Abraham to Melchizedek and the Bible says in the New Testament we are covenant men and women after that covenant and that priesthood of Melchizedek the offering is the sacrificial gift the alm is the charitable gift for what all means you give to charity for need but the last is the first fruit and the first fruit is about increase shout increase verse number 10 says that when you do this you can expect verse number 10 proverbs 3 verse 10 says that now your barns shall be filled with plenty some say plenty now I'll say this again it's it doesn't help us to prosper financially if we're not prospering emotionally maritally how many of there's some things money can't buy money can't buy health money can't buy peace all the money in the world can't buy a, a unified home so I want to declare that God is gonna make your storehouse overflow say overflow with money and what money can't buy healing and peace and joy that your presses will burst with new wine. Now remember God spoke to us uh, uh, last month and the Lord said the key to you growing and accelerating and not forgetting about God, repeat after me, say new wine. Every new dimension will release new oil and new wine. If you get to a new dimension and don't have new wine or new oil, you're gonna forget about God. I'd rather stay where I am than go forward and forget about God. I don't want to promote if I'm going to promote and forget about God. Say amen. There's a new wine, a new oil, a new capacity. Here also is uh, the scripture. The scripture tells us that Jesus, say Jesus, somebody say Jesus is my first fruit. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. I have just a little less volume, just a little less. Thank you so much. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Here's what it says, that Jesus is but now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So this concept is Old Testament, New Testament, and they would bring the first fruits before the altar and the priest would wave it before the Lord and command increase over the people. That's what we're going to do in just a few moments. We're going to dismiss and we're going to come and bring our tithe and offering down to the center but there'll be a line right to my right and people are going to come and I'm going to ask you to pray about what your first fruit is because how many know it's time to increase I got five I said how many know you got to increase spiritually emotionally maritally and this act of worship is an act of faith do you have to know we don't give you amounts you can do that God can give an amount God will show you what to do but let me encourage you it's a sacrificial gift it's not a normal seed it's an act of love and when you worship God responds anytime anywhere in the Bible God was going to meet with man they brought sacrifice say amen when you want to talk to God you you worship and you fast and you pray that's sacrifice the word offering means sacrifice when I sacrifice from my heart God meets me in my prayer in my fasting in my worship but also an act of giving is an act of worship close your eyes so Lord, I pray over these that are going to release something called the first fruits of increase these men need to increase these women need to increase I need to increase as we lay our first fruits on the altar as we return the tithe and again if you're a part of another church hold that tithe for your local church if you have a church hold it if you don't have one we can receive that tithe if you don't pay it you return it it is the Lord's the tithe is the Lord's you return that but God as we lay today a seed of increase increase these men give them inventions give them ideas give them creativity give them anointing for business entrepreneurship lift your hands bless the work of their hands God even as they're working let them be promoted to receive more wage and less time free their time make them heads and not tails make them lenders and not borrowers I command the open heaven over their life so they can free their time and they can pursue their calling in you I declare the spirit of mammon come under the authority of entrepreneurship that they are anointed to create that this spirit of mammon must bow 
and they can be free to serve you with all of their might and they can give to the widow they can give to the orphan I pray blessing that there's not room enough to receive and I also declare a due season on their life a season of due a season of open heaven let it come to them let it multiply this I pray in Jesus name give God a good hand clap right there give him a good hand clap if you're in need of an envelope, you can wave your hand. There's two envelopes. There's a general offering envelope. That's for your tithe. That's for your offering. There's a second envelope just on the first Sunday of the month. It's a first fruit. Ask them for a first fruit. And you can put Proverbs chapter 3 verses 9 and 10 on that envelope. We're going to pray that God increase you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and naturally. These are all a part of what we believe wholeness is. So we're going to worship the Lord. And after you're ready, the first fruit givers are going to line up to the right here. And I'm going to receive you and pray with you, speak a word. I'm going to wave that before the Lord. I'm going to lay it on the altar. I'm going to believe God to add increase. Shout increase. And those that are giving in the middle, after you've given, we're going to dismiss. This is a little bit different of a, of a protocol for our dismissal because we want to make sure we have plenty of time to pray over the first fruit givers. Say amen. So there's different ways you can give. They're going to put up those options on the screen. There's an app or there's a barcode on your envelope. You can give via PayPal there. Uh, they're putting up the giving options in just a moment. Uh, you can zail uh, to the number 951-235-3360. If you're zailing, please take an envelope, fill it out so we can keep a clear record of your gift. Uh, you can give me a cash or check to T-R-I-M, This Rock International Ministries. You can give me a push pay, which is text to give by texting this rock this rock to the number seven seven nine seven seven or a one-time swipe you can see pastor richard in the front or elder joy somebody say i love to worship somebody say i love to worship we love to worship in spirit and in truth and giving is an act of worship we believe that with all of our heart and so we do it reverently we don't give haphazardly we give from joy we give from gratitude. We give as unto the Lord, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. It is an act of worship. And we love to sing, we love to shout, we love to preach, we love to lay hands, but we also love to give. It is a part of our worship to the Lord, and we do it wholeheartedly. Say amen. amen. All right, as you're giving, those watching online, I'm gonna make one announcement, one or two, and then we're gonna dismiss. Uh, Someone say raising the altar. How many are praying for a raise in the altar? What is, give God a hand clap for that raise in the altar. Next week, we will be in San Diego. Last month, we were in Florida. Um, God has moved mightily. Last year, we were in London and in South Africa. And we are raising altars around the world for Jesus. Say amen. How many are praying for us? I said, how many are praying for a raise in the altar? How many partners are in the room? Give God a hand. Make some noise, partners. God bless all of our partners. We will be having our partner Zoom, private Zoom next week. And I'm going to be taking your prayer requests with us to San Diego. I'm going to be praying for you if you're interested in finding out how you can be a partner with Raising the Altar Sea. Pastor Richard will get that email. But next week, uh, that will be April the 12th, Friday and April the 13th, Saturday, we will be raised in the altar with our good friend, Apostle Rocky Martinez. Thank the Lord for Apostle. Amen. Come on, how many appreciate Apostle? How many like San Diego? I like San Diego. Praise the Lord. One day get a house there, praise God. In San Diego, the weather's beautiful. We'll be enjoying the presence Friday night. Prophet Robert Rush will be re raising the altar. Give God a hand clap for Prophet Rush. Saturday at 10 a.m. we will have some breakout sessions and we're going to be talking about the next generation Psalms 24 verse 6 the generation that will seek the face of God but also find out their identity Saturday morning then Saturday evening Apostle Fred Hodge give God a hang up for Apostle Fred Hodge it's gonna be phenomenal and then all of the Saints are coming back uh, that are part of this rock and then uh, Sunday, we'll be right back here. Give God a hand clap for Apostle Kim Gaskin. Give God a hand clap for Apostle Kim. So 
he'll be here. They have some kind of flyer somewhere, but they'll be he'll be here next week, right here at 12 noon, uh, here to stand in our stead as we conclude the raising of the altar. We're believing God for a tremendous outpouring, but registration is free. You can be a part of that, and we're asking God to just be glorified. Let's get ready to dismiss those watching. Let's stretch our hands toward those watching online. Lord, I pray over those under the sound of my voice, whatever nation they're in, they watch from the Netherlands, they watch from Pakistan, they're watching from UK, they're watching from South Africa, Zimbabwe, they're watching around the world. Wherever they are, whatever they need, be that answer. I ask you to heal, I ask you to deliver, I ask you to save. I pray you open up doors no one can close. Feed the, the needy, Lord. Provide for the widow, the orphan. And that our brothers that are under persecution receive justice. Keep them now. And raise us up as a force to be light in the darkness. I ask this now in Jesus' name. Give God a hand clap. Give God a good hand clap right there. All right. God bless you. We are dismissing on our online. I've got one or two quick in-house announcements before we give you're going to be dismissed as soon as the